Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I hope that you're having a nice day. This is Mr. Brusson, of course, and we are here to do some science together, all right? All right, make sure you're ready. You have a pencil, you have maybe your computer, your notebook, or your Google Doc, whatever it is that you use for science, have it ready, okay? Are you ready? Let's do it. So in the last few lessons, uh, we have been talking about maps, right? And specifically, the last lesson was about land features, remember? Things that we find on the crust of our planet. And um, we also learned how to use a physical map and the things that we find on a physical map. Not all maps are the same, correct? We use uh, political maps. You remember what a political map was? It has some lines that we don't normally see on the actual cross. They're human-made maps, human-made lines, excuse me. Uh, they show the separation of countries and uh, separation of uh, states and cities, right? Those are political maps. But a physical map shows, just like it says, the physical features of our planet, things that are actually there naturally. And uh, what was something extremely important to do before we start reading a physical map, or actually before we start reading any map? You remember? That's right. Look at the key. The key will let us know the colors, what the colors mean, what lines mean, what different symbols on that map mean. So it is extremely important that we always look at the key before we start reading any map. But today we are going to look at a different aspect of maps. In fact, it's not so much about maps today. So anyways, let me just show you the learning target and see what it is that we need to accomplish for this lesson. So here is our learning target. I can explain the reason mountain ranges volcanoes and earthquakes occur in patterns. So mountain ranges, volcanoes, and earthquakes occur in patterns. Let's take a look at the word pattern. What is a pattern? So that we can understand what it is that we're going with this target today. So a pattern, you've done a lot of those in math, right? Like sometimes say, okay, the pattern is start with three at two. So then it would be three, at two is five, at two is seven, at two is nine. So a pattern or a pattern that is multiplied by two at one. So one times two equals two plus one is three. Three times two is six plus one equals seven. So patterns in math, right? And today we're not doing math, we're doing science. So the word pattern would mean something that repeats itself, regularity, uh, things that you will see over and over, things that happen in a specific location always, okay? So we want to see how volcanoes, mountain ranges, and earthquakes if there is any pattern. Actually, we do know that there is a pattern and we're gonna see why it is that they follow patterns, okay? The first thing that I want you to do is open a document. It is a an article, uh, uh, a website, but it's an article. And uh, I, we're gonna read the article together, okay? Let me show you the link for the article. It's this one right here, Plate Boundaries National Geographic Society. Plate Boundaries National Geographic Society, okay? It's this article right here. So you can either open it yourself or your teachers are gonna do it for you, okay? Let's read it together, okay? Together. Okay. In some ways, Earth resembles a giant jigsaw puzzle. That is because its outer surface is composed of about 20 tectonic plates. 
enormous sections of Earth's crust that roughly fit together and meet at places called plate boundaries. Well, that's nothing new for us because we've already done some lessons about those plates, right? But in order to understand and to reach today's target, we want to make sure that we completely understand this uh, plates business, right? This tectonic plates. We need to really understand. So let's make sure that we're totally understanding this article. Let's continue. Plate boundaries are important because they are often associated with earthquakes and volcanoes. Hmm. When Earth's tectonic plates grind past one another, enormous amounts of energy can be released in the form of earthquakes. Volcanoes are also often found near plate boundaries because molten rock from deep within Earth called magma can travel upward at these intersections between plates. So take a moment to read that paragraph again on your own. That is extremely important to today's lesson. In fact, the, the target for today's lesson is in that paragraph. So read it one more time by yourselves and then we will continue reading together. Okay, let's continue. There are different types of plate boundaries. For example, sections of Earth's crust can come together and collide. That is a convergent plate boundary. We already talked about that. Spread apart, divergent plate boundary, or slide past one another, a transformed plate boundary. Each of these types of plate boundaries is associated with different geological features. So each one of those different movements of the plates is associated with different landforms, okay? It's associate, associated with, or uh, things that happen on the cross. It's associated with uh, mountain ranges or volcanoes or earthquakes and other things, but we're gonna concentrate today specifically on those. Let's continue reading. Typically, a convergent plate boundary, such as the one between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate, forms towering... Hmm, let me read this again. So typically, a convergent plate boundary, such as the one between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate, forms towering mountain ranges. Hmm. Mountain ranges. That's one of the landforms that we are examining today, like the Himalayas. As Earth's crust is crumpled and pushed upward, in some cases, However, a convergent plate boundary can result in one tectonic plate diving underneath another. This process called subduction involves an older, denser tectonic plate being forced deep into the planet underneath a younger, less dense tectonic plate. When this process occurs in the ocean, and a trench ocean trench can form. We are not talking about uh, trenches today, but there is also a pattern for ocean trenches related to the plates. These trenches are some of the deepest places in the ocean, and they are often the sites of strong earthquakes. But earthquakes... So are you seeing a pattern here? I think so. Let's continue. When subduction occurs, a chain of volcanoes often develops. Hm, there is a volcano near the convergent plate boundary. One such chain of volcanoes can be found on the western coast of the United States, spanning across the states of California, Oregon, and Washington. A divergent plate boundary often forms a mountain chain known as a ridge. This feature forms as magma escapes into the space between the spreading tectonic plates. One example of a ridge is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, an undersea chain of mountains 
that form as two pairs of tectonic plates spread apart, the North American plate and the Eurasian plate in the North and the South American plate and the African plate in the South. Because ocean ridges are found underwater, often at great depths, they can be hard to study. In fact, scientists know more about the surfaces of some of the other planets in our solar system that they do about ocean ridges. So the depths of the ocean is something that we don't know that much about. It's really hard to get there. But anyways, you see the patterns that are developing related to plate tectonics and mountain ranges, volcanoes, earthquakes, underwater mountain ranges too, or mountain ridges, and even the trenches underwater, even though that's not part of our learning target today, but all of those landforms do follow a pattern. And look, there is something else over here. A transform plate boundary occurs when the two plates slide past each other horizontally. A well-known transform plate boundary is the San Andreas Fault, which is responsible for many of California's earthquakes. There you have it, earthquakes. And look at that relationship. So they happen in a pattern for some reason. A single tectonic plate can have multiple types of plate boundaries with the other plates that surround it. For instance, the, the Pacific plate, one of Earth's largest tectonic plates, includes convergent, divergent, and transform plate boundaries. Now, just to get a little bit more explanation on this, I'd like you to uh, watch this video, Volcanoes and Earthquakes, okay? So click on that and um, watch it and see what else you can add to your repertoire of knowledge about uh, these patterns, okay? So open that and watch it and if you need to, take notes. Okay, what I want you to do next is I want you to, in your notebooks, actually, no, 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 not yet in your notebooks. What I want you to do next is have a discussion with a partner about what patterns you find. Where do you normally find volcanoes? Where do you found, find uh, mountain ranges? Where do you find earthquakes? And uh, why do you find them there? So where do you find them? And why do you find them there? Okay, have that discussion with your classmates, with a partner, if at all possible. If you're at home by yourself, then see if you can find someone to talk to about where do you find mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes, and why do you find them there, okay? And now that you shared with a friend or with some other friends, I'd like you to write it down, okay? Write that down. Where do you find mountain ranges, volcanoes, and earthquakes, and why, okay? So write everything that you learned from the article and from the video, write it down. And remember, we're trying to answer the patterns that this thing occur, and why do they occur in those patterns? Okay, we have come to the end of this lesson and we have reached our target. We know that the reason that mountain ranges and even underwater mountains and earthquakes and volcanoes occur in specific parts of our planet is because of tectonic plates either colliding or passing past each other or moving apart from each other. So where we find tectonic plates we find well when we find tectonic plates boundaries the boundary of the tectonic plates plates we find those specific land features okay interesting huh well so the earth is very active 
it seems like everything is just, well, we're walking around and nothing is going on, but there is a lot going on inside our planet. All right, I hope that you have an awesome day. Please look for science, it is everywhere, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.